let's get down to it. Uh, part two of our 2023 program rankings right here at the Voice of College Football. If you're coming across our content for the first time or have only seen very little, lock it in. Give us a chance. You will discover the best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's the aim, the goal, and the mission. If you enjoy our content on a regular basis, please support us. There's a number of ways to do that. Share the videos out on social media. Subscribe, of course, and uh, like the video and financially support as well. All right, let's get down to it. Understanding these are not predictions for the 2023 season. This is not a team roster evaluation. This is also not an all-time ranking. We'll do that in the next four to six weeks. This is about where these programs stand as complete programs. Coaching staff, head coach, facilities, resources, recruiting. The, the current team, yes, does come into a play. Definitely the 2022 performance and how that projects to 2023 based on additions and subtractions through recruiting in the transfer portal, resources, facility, all of that taken into account. Check out the first videos we ran through number 100 through 133 in college football. Let's do 99 all the way up to number 51. Western Michigan, well, they had a head coach in Tim Lester, 37 and 32. He just got axed. So we've got a new head coach in Lance Taylor taking over after a five-in season for Western Michigan in 2022. We saw what uh, P.J. Fleck accomplished there. That vaulted him into the Minnesota job following that undefeated regular season and conference championship in the MAC in 2016. Our number 99 team is Western Michigan. Number 98 in our program rankings, Louisiana Tech, coming off a dismal 3-9 and nine campaign, but this is a program that typically wins, a strong group of five program with an all-time winning percentage of 58%. Unfortunately for them, they have that typical group of five issue with once they get their hands on a good head coach, it just becomes a stepping stone to the power five. Sonny Dykes is the most recent uh, of that example. Then you got Skip Holtz. You got Jack Bicknell going back in the day. Derek Dooley moved on to Tennessee, of course. Billy Brewer to Ole Miss. So Louisiana Tech typically wins. And of course, they own that one distinction of being the only group of five in history of bowl play to defeat and shut out a power five a few years ago against Manny Diaz and Miami 14 to nothing. Our number 98 team in a down spot right now, but it's Louisiana Tech. You saw in the first part of our series where we've got the two newcomers to FBS play in 2023, Sam Houston and also Jacksonville State at the bottom rungs until they prove something. Well, this school only had one shot in 2022, and they have proved it. James Madison, what a season they delivered with eight wins in 11 games under Kurt Signetti. He's 41-8. and eight. So this program's on a roll. They took the step up. They have a win about 10 or 12 years ago against Virginia Tech. That was one of the, the famous showings by James Madison. We've seen them on college game day, and here they are in the FBS in the Sun Belt defeating Sunbelt powers like Appalachian State. They are the first team ever in their inaugural season in FBS to reach the top 25 at some point in the season. At number 97 in our program rankings, the Sunbelts, James Madison. At number 96 in our program rankings, we go to a school that uh, first played in the FBS in 2013. They won a Sunbelt Championship the very next season under Willie Fritz. They've appeared in five bowl games since 2015, currently coached by Clay Helton, and that's Georgia Southern coming off a 6-7 and seven season in 2022. Our number 96 team in FBS play program rankings for 2023 is Georgia Southern. We've got a soft spot here at the Voice of College Football for program number 95. Our buddy Joey Jones, the former head coach and the first ever head coach of South Alabama football, used to come on here and talk college football with us. Uh, he's no longer there, but he built something that has stabilized and been fairly strong in FBS play. They're coming off a 10-3 and season under Kane Womack. He's 15-10 and in his tenure. And South Alabama coming off a nice season that included a near upset of the Rose Bowl against a good UCLA team, 32-31. Uh, the program has been down in recent years, but again, a nice rebound at 10-3 and this past season. The program started in 2009 under Joey Jones. Steve Campbell had a rough ride at 9-26, and but they look to be in good shape again under head coach Womack at South Alabama at number 95. 
At number 94 in our 2023 program rankings, the 2022 MAC champions. They are the Toledo Rockets under Jason Candle. He's had a fine run there at 46 and 27. And uh, this program has won 12 MAC championships since 1967. Number 94 on the list, Toledo. At number 93 in our program rankings, a school that has certainly uh, jumped up and uh, been a thorn in the backside of a lot of teams in the SEC and elsewhere in the South, and that's been Southern Miss. Think Brett Favre, of course, that's where he got his start and uh, played his way to a second-round draft selection by the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Southern Miss jumped up and probably gained most national acclaim for upsetting Florida State in the late 80s when they were a top-10 team in the country. Jeff Bauer had a nice run there from 1991 all the way to 2007. They were in Conference USA for a long, long time. Currently in the Sun Belt, uh, they were a stepping stone program for guys like Todd Munkin and Larry Fedora, who both won more than 60% of their games at Southern Miss. Coming off a nice 7-6 season under Will Hall, 10-15 overall. Our number 93 program is Southern Miss. At number 92 in our program rankings right here at the Voice of College Football, please like the video, share the videos out on social media, and subscribe. The Mighty Bobcats of OU. Frank Solich there for a long, long time after getting fired after a 9-3 and season in Nebraska. Then he goes to Ohio U there in Athens, Ohio, and builds a mini dynasty. Never won the MAC championship, though. Always came close. Five bowl appearances, five bowl wins for Frank Solich, 77 and 46. His record, uh, due to health concerns, he had to step away. Tim Albin takes over, had a rough first season, but bounces back this past season, going to the Mid American Conference Championship game at 10 and 4. Our number 92 program is Ohio. The most recent claim to fame for this program would be producing, of course, Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen under this current head coach. At number 91, we go out to the Cowboys of Wyoming under Craig Bull, who, despite being under 500, has held that position for a long time at 52 and 56, under 500 in the Mountain West Conference as well since 2014. So they consistently underachieve in the conference or uh, are a marginal team, but uh, they did finish 7-6 and six this past season, and they are our number 91 team in our program rankings. Out of the Mountain West, it's Wyoming. It's practically a brand-new program with a new head coach in Tom Herman, a new quarterback via Nebraska and Casey Thompson. Willie Taggart's been fired after winning just 15 out of 33 games. Lane Kiffin won big there with two conference championships and really took this program to a new level and recruited better than anyone in Conference USA when he was there. Well, Tom Herman's going to try to do the same coming off a 5-7 and seven season again with Willie Taggart. Herman takes over our number 91 team in the FBS program rankings is FAU. It's been an up-and-down ride for this next program in the Mountain West Conference, and it's the Aggies of Utah State. They had a great run under Matt Wells, who played there, then coached Gary Anderson, who then went on to win uh, pretty successfully there at Wisconsin and Oregon State, did a fine job at Utah State. Gary Anderson actually came back at one point. Now we've got another Anderson in Blake Anderson, who won consecutive Sun Belt Conference Championships with Arkansas State. So he's there at Utah State. Of course, they had a big season two years ago in winning a bowl game against Oregon State, winning 11 games. This past season, dropped to 6-7. and seven. Blake Anderson, 17-10, and 10, our number 89 team in the FPS program rankings, Utah State. Buffalo can win. Lance Leipold proved it. Now, unfortunately, he's off to Kansas after going 24-10 and 10 at Buffalo in the Mid-American Conference and competing for championships. Former Michigan co-defensive coordinator Maurice Lindquist is the new guy in town. He's 11-14 and 14 in two seasons, did have a better season in 2022 at 7-6. We're back in the MAC for team and program number 88, the Buffalo Bulls. We continue our march through the program rankings here in 2023 at the Voice of College Football. We go to the state of Oklahoma and Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane. Philip Montgomery, after a pretty long stay there for a head coach in FBS play, 43 and 53, really had a rocky ride. He had like two nice, really nice season, close to double digit seasons. But other than that, a lot of down seasons. They finally got rid of him. They bring in Kevin Wilson via Ohio State. Of course, former head coach at Indiana, where he did some nice things, especially on the offensive side of the football. 
Uh, that's his calling card. He did great things, of course, at Oklahoma as well. Kevin Wilson in his first season trying to do something at Tulsa following uh, Philip Montgomery's final season at 5-7. and seven. Our number 87 program in the FPS is Tulsa. There's typically one group of five program that takes the spotlight that is the giant killer that rules the group of five. Boise State for a long, long time. They are the prime example and did it for the longest stretch of time and the most successful stretch of time. We had Houston, we had UCF, we had Cincinnati. We also had TCU after Boise State. How about Liberty? They had a really good head coach in Hugh Freeze, regardless of what you may think of him, 34-15 and 15, in his stay with Liberty as an independent. Now they go to Conference USA with a new head coach in Jamie Chadwell, who did an excellent job with Coastal Carolina. So replace a really good head coach with another guy that's proven, and that's difficult to do at this stage of the game in a group of five to get a coach that has as much success on his resume as a Jamie Chadwell. So our number 86 program is Liberty. After stops at Texas, Arkansas, and SMU, Jeff Trailer doing an amazing job as a head coach at Texas San Antonio. They've got two straight conference championships. They are 0-3 in bowl games. Got to clean that up, finish off the great seasons. But man, conference championships, 11-3 season this past year. He's 30-10 in Texas, San Antonio, and people come to the games, and it's actually a decent site there for a group of five there in the state of Texas. Our number 85 program is Texas, San Antonio. We had a great conversation this week with former Troy coach, current West Virginia head coach, Neil Brown. Check it out right here at the Voice of College Football. Troy is back at it, winning the Sun Belt, 12-2 and under John Sumrall. Got to credit him. He's never been a head coach. And we mentioned Neil Brown, of course, he lifted Troy from a 3-9 and nine team to 4-8, and eight, then three consecutive double-digit seasons, winning seasons, and conference championships and bowl wins for Neil Brown there. They beat LSU about five or six years ago when LSU was a top-10 team in the country. You can win at Troy, and they've done it under multiple head coaches. So really good pro- program at Troy, our number 84 program in our Voice of College Football rankings. East Carolina has a really nice history of developing and producing NFL players, knocking off some big dogs throughout its history, but they've had a rough ride for about a decade. Up until now, Mike Houston may have something going. They were really good in 2022 at 8-5. They nearly knocked off North Carolina State, outplayed them for much of the game. Houston's only 22-24 there, but again, 8-5 this past season. East Carolina may be ready to make another surge here in the group of five. They're our number 83 program in 2023. The college football tradition is steep at West Point. Of course, going back to the 40s and the heyday of Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, winning Heisman trophies, matching up against Notre Dame and part of that powerful Eastern block of college football. And then down, 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 horrible through much of the ensuing decades until Jeff Munkin showed up. This program used to get beat down in that game that everybody watches at the end of the season against Navy in December, but not so much anymore. Army owns that series now, thanks to Munkin. He's 64-49 and 49 at Army. The Cadets are coming off a 6-6 six and six season. They're number 82 in our program rankings. This may not be the case at Florida going forward, but Billy Napier won big at Louisiana. Tim Lager takes over. He went 6-7 and seven in his first season, so he's trying to revitalize uh, that program, get it back to where it was under Napier. Our 81st-ranked program in the country is Louisiana. We have a lot of admiration for one Bill Clark. He's had to step away from football because of health concerns, but look at what he did at UAB. He's been the head coach since 2014. That's great. He's 49-26, and 26, but... They didn't have a football program for two seasons, and he stayed there, and he came back and coached the football program even when that administration gave up on football, and then alumni and fans and players hung in there and fought for football to come back, and he's a really good coach who could have went anywhere, could have went a number of places, I should say, but Bill Clark stayed at UAB and built back a winner just like that. Again, he's had to step away. Now, Trent Dilfer, they've got a name coming to the program and one Trent Dilfer, of course, Super Bowl winning quarterback with Baltimore, TV analyst for a long, long time. 
and uh, he comes in from um, a small, small school, I believe, in Tennessee. They're coming off a 7-6 and six season there in Birmingham. Of course, the attention in that state goes to Alabama and Auburn, but UAB's got a really good football program and a really strong program, thanks to Bill Clark, who was 32-12 and 12 in conference play there, where they dominated and played for conference championships. Our number 80 program in all of college football belongs to UAB. You got to love college football for places like Appalachian State. Of course, they burst onto the scene. We know why. 2007 at the big house against Michigan. Some people call it the greatest upset in the history of college football. But it wouldn't have been such a great upset had people known what App State was going to be under the guides of Scott Satterfield and Eli Drinkwitz. Uh, Think what you will about their work in the Power Five at Louisville and at Missouri. But they did a great job, of course, At Appalachian State, this is a nice little program and has been for a long time. And they've got great support there at uh, Boone, North Carolina. 26-13 and is Sean Clark there. He did have a down season by App State standards at 6-6 this past season because they're used to winning 11-12 football games every year under the aforementioned head coaches. So we've seen this in a few designated special stops at the group of five Boise State of course the best example where if you build a program then you hire the next really strong coach they can keep it going and we've seen that line of succession at App State the latest is Sean Clark coming off six and six but 26 and 13 in his stay at App State let's see if he just mounted those wins because of the previous head coaches or he can keep it going our number 79 program in the uh College football rankings here at the Voice of College Football, App State. All right, folks, we've hit the Power Five. This is our worst Power Five program. Northwestern, Vandy, who is it? Let's understand our criteria. Let's go back to the criteria. I'm not going to restate all of it, but let's also understand conference affiliation. Boston College, 3-9 and nine under Jeff Halfley. Jeff Halfley, nice run in the NFL as defensive backs coach. Ohio State, one of the reasons why they hired him, they said this at his introductory news conference, that he knows how to win. He's coming from Ohio State, producing top three teams every year. NFL success, but any had a nice couple seasons, decent seasons by Boston College standards, yeah, uh, his first two seasons, but it's not looking good right now. They're not recruiting well. They never recruit well, but I mean even by BC standards where the recruiting classes are in the 50s and 60s, they're worse than that under Jeff Halfley. Nobody cares in Boston. If they're able to survive all this realignment, uh, they could stay and hang in a big conference maybe because of the academics and because the other programs, the other conferences will see that Boston TV market Uh, for the likes of their big programs taking advantage, playing in Boston. But it's just got a lot of things going up against it. Rich history. Doug Flutie, Matt Ryan, all the great players through the years and great coaches. Uh, Of course, uh, Tom Coughlin did a great job there. But uh, my goodness, Boston College right now, right now, 2023, of course, this is not an all-time ranking. Number 78 in our program rankings. At number 77 in our Voice of College Football program rankings, we go to the SEC. So who could it be? It could be no one but Vandy. Clark Lee is 7-17. Seven and 17. Went 5-7 and seven last year. So they had lost 26 consecutive SEC games, and most of those by 40 or 50 points. Then out of nowhere, my goodness, they beat Florida and Kentucky. And no, the Gators and the Cats were not special teams last year were below their standards, especially Florida, of course. But still, much better talent. Vandy knocked them both off. Clark Lee said at this point last summer during SEC Media Days, we're going to build a great football program. He actually said the greatest program in the country. But do they have what it takes? Are they going to pour in the type of support, the facilities, the resources to make them a Stanford of 10 years ago, a Northwestern of three or four years ago. Are they going to do that at Vandy? Well, they never really have. I know James Franklin won nine and four back-to-back seasons, but they were not a factor in the SEC. Again, nine and four at Vandy back-to-back. That's phenomenal. All right, Clark Lee may have something going here. May be able to get to a bowl game like Derek Mason did once, although most of his stay was dismal. So Vandy is Vandy. 
until proven otherwise. And they're number 77 in our program rankings. What is going on at Northwestern? Pat Fitzgerald has my respect. He is the respect of the nation. He's a tremendous football coach. Did a great job at Northwestern. Now, let's understand that you can win at Northwestern. We didn't think that in the 80s and 90s. It was one of the worst programs. Almost lost its status. Almost gave up on football completely uh, around the time Dennis Green was there. Uh, But they rallied. So, coaches have won. Gary Barnett, Randy Walker did a tremendous job won the last Big Ten championship at Northwestern, a shared championship in 2000. So it's been done before Pat Fitzgerald. But consider, this team is never regarded. And Pat Fitzgerald's been there for 17 years. And he has finished in the top 25 five times. He's finished in the top 10 in 2020. Shortened season, yes. But none of those times was Northwestern given any consideration of finishing ranked. And he's done it five times. They have won the... Division twice, of course, appearing in the Big Ten Championship game and acquitting themselves. They got blown out in the end, but acquitting themselves against Ohio State in 2018 and 2020. But what has happened now? I know the deal is that they cycle up, cycle down based on the veteran status of their roster. No, they have never cycled like this. They have never cycled down like they have the last two seasons and three of the last four. They are 4-20 in their last 24 games. They went 1-11 last year, and they won a Big Ten game. You would think 1-11, well, they went 0-9 in the Big Ten, and they beat a MAC team. No, they lost to a MAC school. They always lose to MAC school. So one thing about Pat Fitzgerald's run there at Northwestern, though I admire his ability, they always just <laughs> lose these games inexplicably. They lost to an FCS team. This past year. They're a Big Ten team. Again, they can do it there. He's still over 500 at 110 and 101, but he better not stay there long because he's going to have a sub-500 record here real soon. Uh, Northwestern coming off 1-11. We don't know what's going on there. The strain of the academics, NIL, that might be working against him and trying to build something. But talking about building, they just built a brand-new facility for football that is tremendous and they seem to have been building towards something they had nfl draft selections in the first round for the first time ever northwestern this is uh, going to be an interesting season with a new quarterback coming in from cincinnati and ben bryant most likely the starter number 76 northwestern we know greg shiano is a good football coach we know he knows what he's doing both in terms of the football and also building a program but is he That good of a football coach. Okay, Greg Schiano took over Rutgers, of course, in the 2000s and got them to a stretch of time where they were competing, competing for Big East championships, going to bowl games every year, and they were strong. He got them to a strong position. He left. They fell apart. Chris Ash did an awful job there. Schiano comes back in 2000 instantly. They lost 21 consecutive games in the Big Ten. And they weren't losing by three points. They were losing by 40 and 50 points every week. They were an embarrassment. He immediately made them respectable. At least they could go on the field, only lose by a couple touchdowns, beat a couple teams out of conference. And now they've done that for a few years. So now we're coming up on year four of Greg Schiano, And they're coming off one win in the Big Ten. Four and eight season. They did beat Boston College. Uh, but now we get to see if Greg Schiano. Uh, with 12 wins and 34 games, 4-8 and eight last season, can take them to another level, start to get to bowl games, and maybe with this reconfigured Big Ten, they can kind of separate from Ohio State, Michigan a little bit, Penn State, not see them every year. So our number 75 team is an interesting one because they're going to have a boatload of money coming in through this TV contract. What are they going to do with it? They're at Rutgers. So keep it locked in here at the Voice of College Football. Leave your comments below. Where did we miss it? What do we have to consider? Understand our criteria. These are not all-time rankings, and these are not uh, projections in regards to where these teams are going to finish in 2023. This is a program ranking as we currently stand based on the coach, uh, based on the 2022 roster, transitioning with ads and subtractions into 2023, recruiting footprint, facilities, resources, All of that taken into consideration along with name, brand, and tradition. So we size it up. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. 
thanks to you right here at the Voice of College Football.